Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE Dishwasher Electronic Control Board. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at ApplianceParsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new electronic control board. The electronic control board controls the functions of the dishwasher. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if it's gone bad and your dishwasher is not running properly or you're getting the error code saying it's bad. In order to get to the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and pull the lower dish rack out and set it aside. Now that we have the rack out, we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the dishwasher door and use it to carefully start to pull the dishwasher out. Once you have it out far enough, we're going to grab the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Now that we have the dishwasher pulled out, we're going to put a towel down on the floor so when we lay the dishwasher down, we don't damage anything. Once you have the towel down, we're just going to carefully lay the dishwasher on its back. Now that we have the dishwasher on its back, we're going to take the access panel off. We're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to take out the screws. Once you have the screws out, you can lift the access panel off and set it aside. Now we're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to take out the screw that holds the junction box cover on. Once you have the screw out, we can lift the junction box cover off. There's a little tab on the other end. You just have to kind of lift up on it and pull it off. Then we can remove the two wiring harnesses that connect to the control board. There's one here by the junction box cover. There's a locking tab on it. You just want to press and pull it. And then the one on the other end, just press on the locking tab and pull it off. Then we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the two screws that hold the tray that the electronic control board is mounted to. You want to make sure you don't lose the little rubber washers. Now we can lower the tray down. Just want to carefully pull it down. You don't want to pull on it too hard. We have to disconnect the wires from the electronic control board. There's little locking tabs on each one. If they're tight, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to help release them. Once you have them all released, you can pull the tray with the board off the dishwasher. Now we're going to put the assembly on a towel so we don't scratch anything. And then we have to take the control board off the tray. First thing we're going to do is use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw that holds it in. There's some clips that hold the control board in also. We're going to use the needle nose pliers to press on the release tab so we can lift it out. 
The locking tab for the clips are on one side, so we're just going to squeeze it with the pliers and then lift up on the control board so it doesn't lock back in. Once you have this first one done, we're just going to do the other ones. Once you have all the tabs released, you can pull the electronic control board out of the tray. Here's the old electronic control board next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new electronic control board in, you just want to line it up, set it into place, and make sure it goes down onto the little white mounting tabs, and snap into place. Once you have it pushed in place, we can grab the quarter inch nut driver and put in the screw. Once you have the board mounted, we can put it back in the dishwasher. Before you put the assembly back in, you want to make sure that the wiring harnesses stayed in their little cutouts. Otherwise, when you go to put it in, the assembly won't fit. Once you have the wiring harnesses in place, we're just going to put the tray with the board in there. Then we're going to reach in and connect the wiring harnesses. Had uh, two on this end. Had the red one, which went over here. Just need to make sure these all lock in so you get a good connection. And you have the white one. And the white one on the other end. Once you have them all in place, we're going to lift the tray up. Just want to make sure the wiring harnesses go through little cutouts again. Once you have it in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws with the rubber washers on them. Once you have the screws on, we can connect the other wiring harnesses. You have the power wire that just clips in. And then you have the one in the center that uh, goes up to the controls. Just want to make sure they both clip in and lock into place. Now we can put the junction box cover on. There's a little tab right here that you have to make sure it goes into the little opening there to hold it in place. And you want to make sure all the wires stay underneath it. You have to do is set it down into place. Make sure the tab goes in there. Once you have it in place, we're going to use the 516 inch nut driver. Put the screw in. Now we can put the access panel on. Just have to set it in place. And then we can use the 516 inch nut driver to put the screws in. Now that we have the dishwasher put back together, we can carefully set it up on its feet and pull the towel out. Now we have to reach underneath and put the line through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 516 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected, we can open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws in, we can put the lower dish rack back in. All you have to do is set it on the door and push it back in. 
Once you have it in, we can close the door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.